Hey everyone, this is Obo and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. After landing on the moon, we took our rover for a stroll last time. We being uh, Bob and Jebediah Kerman. And now we're going to get our brave explorers back home. It looks like we're actually on the perfect side to do so as well. We just need to burn in this direction and we're gonna fall right back at the planet. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Lando. There. Now I know my landing wasn't the most efficient and, well, I almost crashed at one point as well and it was actually a good thing I was recording this because, and later on I thought, why didn't I just turn on the RCS? That way I wouldn't have to sway around like that. <laughs> but yeah. There's too much going on, I can't really think. Getting too nervous for the landing and I can't be innovative. Hmm. Now actually, I kind of want to get a pinpoint landing, but... Hmm. I very much like to land right in the ocean next to Kerbal Space Center. Not quite sure how long the days are on Kerbal though. Well, I guess I can find out, that's what, that's what time acceleration is for, right? Um, uh, yeah, I um, have a ruler up against my screen now, <laughs> so I know um, where the day-night line is. There we go. Okay, three hours, 40 minutes approximately, so let's... Okay, uh, too fast. There it is. So now that's 9 hours 40 minutes. Um, okay, so the day night cycle on Kerbin is exactly 6 hours. Okay, interesting. Well, that's a little less than what it's going to take to get those guys back. So. I just warp forward a little bit. Should be able to make this landing. Let me. I guess I could have just launched then and there, and it would have worked out as well, but... Mm. I don't want to land right on top of it, I just... Uh, I want to land in the ocean here, so... Oh, that looks about right. So I guess they set it up in a way that would mean if you see see them here, they're going to be in the exact same spot when you come back from the moon. It's actually pretty clever. Guess we're going to land right in the morning. Alright. Oh. Apparently we're on the dark side now. Let's see. Oh yes. All right. Um, let's go. While my landing wasn't the most efficient, I still have plenty of fuel left. Which I guess is a good thing. Should probably 
uh, I've picked those other guys up earlier. Uh, I mean, Jebediah and Bob. I mean, one we don't know, but... Ah, whatever. We have a over there, so why waste it? Perhaps is, is going to extend in the direction here, in the opposite side of the moon. So that means we're going to slow down in relation to curving, and well, we're just going to fall right back down at the planet, <laughs> which is what we want, really. RCS to do a bit of fine tuning and that should be fine. Now let's watch as we depart the moon. There's Kirvin. As you can see now, we're just falling behind the moon until we're out of uh, the range of its gravity, and then we're just going to continue on this way. I mean, it's a bit hard to see in this view. It kind of looks like we're falling to the right and then suddenly going left, but we're actually kind of sitting here. And then we're going to continue on this way. Oh, I do hope I have this right. <laughs> Looks a bit close. Never landed on land before, I'm not quite sure if it works. Well, actually, I think we're going to make it. Because we're starting to speed up now, and then we're going to enter the atmosphere and slow down again. Alright, let's get this turned the correct way. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, I'm going to ditch those stages now before we enter, enter the atmosphere. So I'm a bit worried they're gonna come back flying towards me again <laughs> if I'm already in the atmosphere, since they're going to be the ones experiencing the drag, since we're behind them.
and there you can see some re-entry heat already now oh, there's Kerbal Space Center close enough I mean it doesn't have to be right on the coast as long as I don't smash into the next continent I'm happy <laughs> hmm I think there's something down there as well okay no more SAS, since I don't have a module attached to it. Well, okay, that was the automatic camera. I don't really want to steer this thing. Cause last time I tried it just spin out of control. <laughs> I guess because the capsule is so light. Um, I know there's the, the fine-tuned controls with caps lock, but unfortunately that doesn't work on the joystick. Well, I suppose I could use the keyboard for this part, but I think we're coming in fine anyway. Let's see, where are we going? Yeah, that looks good. So one thing I'm still not quite sure about is at which speed am I supposed to deploy a parachute? I mean it doesn't uh, tell you in the description of the parachute like the maximum amount of stress it can handle or something like that. I guess I'll do it once I enter this part of the atmosphere, but I don't know. Fifteen thousand meters. Yeah, let's deploy it now. We're starting to go downwards now. Four thousand five hundred meters, one hundred fifty meters per second. Is that good? I wish I knew. <laughs> well, it's the parachute that fits on this capsule, and there's nothing else on it, so. I guess it should be able to handle it. One hundred meters per second, that's like three hundred sixty kph rain. Oh nice, okay, hit the point. And all my curls are still alive. Awesome. Oh, let's see how far off we were. No, well, whatever. <laughs> At 200 meters. I wonder what this is. Is it just a star? Some debris? Or maybe it's another planet? Hmm. 
Right, 60 meters, 50, 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, there we go. And splash down, nice. It's going to turn. Right, um, that's, oh, that's okay, sensitive controls. Where's oh, the the exit? I'm not quite sure if I should let one of them out. <laughs> I don't want him to fall in the water and drown. Yeah, I think I'm just... Okay, actually let me check on what this spot could be. Oh, it's in Minmus. Interesting. Seems to be in the same plane as me. Hmm. Well, now we know. Alright. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.